and the Fargo Dome turns into a home for the homeless. Good evening, everyone. The Fargo Dome did not host a football game today or a trade show, but people trying to get back their lives back together again. My name is Becca Kruger, and I'm the executive director of the FM Coalition for Homeless Persons, and today we're holding Project Homeless Connect. It's great. I think that Project Homeless Connect is serving so many people. Coming out here to the Dome was a really good idea because of all the folks that are coming out looking for help. I think it's kind of sad that so many people need this help, but I'm really grateful the community is able to provide this kind of support. I was amazed by all of the agencies that are providing services to those that have today, federal, state, local, community. We shall, we must, we will realize the goal of Sec Secretary Shinseki and eliminate homelessness among uh, veterans. Hi, my name is Dakota. Uh, from I'm homeless and I'm here at one of this uh, from stand down here today here at the Fargo Dome in Fargo, North Dakota. Uh, from been going through some struggles for a couple of years now, you know, but I'm trying to get my life back together. I'm not ashamed to be on and say why I'm going through the situation because I already know what got me here, but I'm getting myself out of it. Uh, from I think that the community needs to get in the act and help people that are homeless that probably are displaced workers and things like that. It's uh, you know. Dan Matson, and uh, all I want to talk about is uh, how things are running and how things are going in the United States when it comes to shelters and everything else for the homeless. I lived in and everything else and they expect people to pay $7 a night to stay in these shelters and stuff like that. But the main thing is we need to get out and we need to find work and everything else, but how can we do that when we got to work it off while we're in there? We can't. It's impossible for us to do it. Um, this video is to let you know how hard my life has been um, since July of 2008. I'm a parent of a teenager. Um, we all learn as we grow. And my son got us in some legal um, trouble to where the parents was charged with both crimes. And I can't get employment. I can't even get a, job, uh, a housing because of my background. I had problems with the homeless thing, um, finding a place to live and stuff. Just um, finding people that are understanding the stigma thing, and then having a mental illness too. People um, tend to look down on you. Where at the homeless, homeless, homeless thing? Homeless, homeless, homeless project. Project homeless. homeless. Project homeless. But the thing, the thing that I have to say most of all, we start, got stopped to make the video, and it's about um, the Native American Christian Ministry, known as, also known as the Wesley Center. Um, we, we, pretty, we pretty much volunteer there. We volunteer a lot of our time to work there for free, um, to help the homeless people, to give them a place to go, give, a, give them a little hope, you know what I mean? Be their friend, be their brother. <laughs> well, hi, I am talking about the stigma of mental illness. Reporter Kevin Wall when people Fargo. picture Fargo-Moorhead, few think of this, a winding line of homeless snaking its way inside the Fargo. Here, people looking for work. They're not here because of the services, they're here because they think there's work. I county social services. Um, I do chemical health assessment. Program director of Sisters Path, and what we are is a chemical dependency treatment facility for women with children that come and live. Right in front of Moorhead, and I'm here today mainly to help individuals who are struggling with the pregnancy center. We've been treating, um, doing a lot of training um, with a first impressions class. We've also been doing computer skills. The executive director of Social Connection in Moorhead. We're a nonprofit agency that works with adults 18 years and up who have uh, a severe persistent mental illness or a severe mental illness. I just wanted to say homelessness sucks. <laughs> We should do anything we can to prevent it. chance to have all these material things but that chance you know slipped out of our hands a long time ago right 
Homelessness isn't a choice. since 91. North Dakota is a good place to be, I'm trying to get off my feet. People are helping me out, get things better. I have been um, homeless numerous times um, over the years. I've also been um, resident manager of a building for six years. So I know both sides of the, you know, the coin. And I'm Turkish Humanity for the Homeless, Shelter Director. We house 65 people. The 65 people we house are men, women, and children. People are not aware that we're housing women and children. But we can hold up to 64 people in our family area alone. I'm with the YWCA, and I'm the Director of the Programs. My name is Karen Carlson. I'm a case manager with our Transitional Housing Program, and I'm Erin um, some of the trends that we're seeing right now um, with our shelter program, we are constantly full, which is not usually our norm. My name is Joanne Sturman, and I was um, homeless about 13 years ago. My name is Jan Anderson. I work with the homeless in Fargo Public Schools. Um, we work to enroll and educate children that have homeless parents or youth, unaccompanied youth that are on their own. I spoke to a gentleman this morning, I asked where he slept last night, and he said, my tent. It's, it's hard not to be moved when I slept in a warm bed I just bed wish night. people in the community would uh, kind of understand what people that are homeless are going through, and that they need help too, and they are people too. So you never know if you got a family member, a brother, sister, you know, just help out, uh, hear their voice, and uh, from, don't deny them, because you know, they're people too.